Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Shawnee Sutton. I am the Enrollment Manager at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies for the Professional Certificate Programs. I am joined by Elizabeth Ferris, who is an instructor in the Certificate in International, International Migration Studies. Um, we will be discussing the certificate today. And I just wanted to go over a few little housekeeping um, rules with you. So what we are going to do, uh, Ms. Ferris will be talking to you all and giving you all an overview of the Certificate International Migration Studies. At the end, we will have a Q&A session where you can actually type your questions in the question panel. I will read those off and Ms. Ferris will actually answer some of your questions. During Ms. Ferris' presentation, I will also be working to answer some questions um, if I can. Thank you all for joining us, and I will let Ms. Ferris um, start her presentation. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. As Shani just said, my name is Beth Ferris. I'm a research professor in Georgetown School of Foreign Service. I've been working with migration and refugees for for many years, just a couple of words about my background. I spent about 20 years doing humanitarian work in the field, mostly working with refugees and various humanitarian situations pretty much in every region. And also got very interested in people who were displaced by disasters, which led to my interest in environmental migration. So this is a program that we run through the School of Continuing Studies. We have students from all over the world who, who take this certificate. We've been doing this for a number of years and we're always open to suggestions for new courses and I'll, I'll talk about some of that as we go along. But now I'm going to um, turn off my camera because I can't see the, the PowerPoint otherwise. And um, just give you a short overview of the Certificate in International Migration Studies. I put my email address here, and it's also on the last slide, just in case you have any questions that come up after um, the, the presentation. But just a, a few words about just the importance of global migration in our world today. Right now, there are about 272 million people, about 3.5% of the world's population, who live outside the countries of their birth. Um, that's a figure from the United Nations. It's based on people who living outside the country of their birth for at least a year. So even that figure doesn't count the large numbers of people who are in process, in transit, going from one place to another. About 70 million people were forcibly displaced from their homes in 2019. That includes about 20 million refugees, about 5 million or so Palestinians, and another 40 million who are displaced within the borders of their own country. And that latter group tends to get much less attention from the international community than, than refugees who cross an international border. All indications are that both numbers are growing. More people are traveling because of, because of work, study, family reunification, sense of adventure, as well as people being displaced for reasons beyond their control. We know that over the years, migration has been central to global prosperity. The McKinsey Institute estimates that while migrants make up about three and a half percent of the world's population, it's pretty close to 10 percent of global GDP comes directly from migrants' work. And migrants have been a source of dynamism, and particularly in urban centers and in many different regions. In many cases, such as the United States, Canada, Australia, migration has been central to our national identity as countries of immigrants. Other countries, such as Germany and Sweden and Kenya have different understandings of nationality, which are, are linked up to with the whole phenomenon of global migration. And finally, governments at all levels, local levels, state levels, provincial, regional mechanisms, civil society organizations, private sector, international institutions are all challenged by migration. Certainly we've seen in the past few years the rise of anti-immigrant sentiment, development of new policies intended to restrict the migration of people in big debates over undocumented or irregular migration, the role of smugglers and traffickers 
traffickers. It, you know, the whole issue of migration is such a multi-dimensional one. You know, it's about economics and politics and society and culture and the media, uh, security and, and so on. So we offer this certificate, which we've done for a number of years, trying to provide in-depth knowledge about various components of migration, different groups of people on the move, whether they're refugees or labor migrants, for example, some of the causes or drivers of migration, why are so many people moving, and what are the consequences, the effects on host societies, on transit societies, on countries of origin, you know, issues around brain drain, for example, um, in different regions. We look at normative frameworks, you know, what are the international rules of the game? Um, whether it's the 1951 Refugee Convention or various laws pertaining to, to migrants, what are, the, what are the norms and laws and conventions and rules by which people move from one country to another or sometimes within their own country? We compare policy responses, particularly to large-scale migration. We look at, in particular at the United States, since we're based here, but we also try to have a comparative perspective to compare how the U.S. is dealing with our borders, for example, with how Germany or Thailand or other countries are. And, and again, we look at the impacts on the countries of origin, the transit, the receiving countries, because those impacts are actually quite different. So the, the certificate program requires six classes, some of which are taught online, some of which are taught in in-person three-day classes. Right now, as you know, everything is flex learning or online. Um, and the flex learning through the School of Continuing Studies really means that you're in real time online for nine to five every day for three days, um, as compared with our online courses, which can be taken over a number number of weeks. So you need six classes, four of those are required, plus two electives. Um, so the required courses are global trends in international migration. Typically that's a day longer, a four day class, which gives you an overview of different kinds of migration and the big burning issues. Um, that's tends to be offered in person in the spring, we haven't set a date yet, or online in the fall or late summer. We offer a course in labor migration that's coming up the 20th to the 22nd of January. That's taught by Lindsay Lowell, who's a Georgetown professor who's got a lot of experience um, with different forms of labor migration, works a lot with census data. You know, that in particular, the U.S. immigration system is very complicated. There are tons of different kinds of visas, but he goes through this and tries to systematize you know, different kinds of labor migration. And again, some of the burning issues around recruitment, treatment of migrants, how you deal with undocumented migrants, issues around sending remittances, which are, as I'm sure most of you know, is you know, a major source of foreign income for many of the countries of origin. Then we offer a course on immigrant integration. That's both refugees and labor migrants. That'll be taught next month here, 10th to the 12th of February. How do people integrate in society? Well, what, what do we mean by integration? How does that compare with you know, concepts such as assimilation and inclusion. And again, these are issues that at one time were seen really as social, cultural issues, increasingly being seen as security issues. You know, if immigrants don't integrate into a society, don't feel a part of the society and loyalty to the state, there can be security implications, as we've seen, for example, in, in France, where some unintegrated immigrants have been at the forefront of terrorist activity. And then the fourth required course is one on refugees and displaced persons. This has been taught online for the past couple of years. I think we'll probably keep this online um, uh, over a two week period, probably late August, early September or sometime around. And that looks at refugees, internally displaced persons. Then some of the electives we offer, and this varies every term, we try to offer two or three electives every, every semester. So in March, we'll be teaching environmental migration. That's one of the classes I teach, looking at how people are displaced by sudden and slow onset disasters, the role of climate change, dealing with issues around so-called sinking islands, um, 
actually those islands will become uninhabitable because of climate change long before they're physically submerged. But looking at some of the characteristics of this movement, which is already taking place both internationally and in the United States and places like Norfolk, Virginia and Alaska, name just, just two examples. And then looking at, at policy responses, you know, how do you move a whole community in order to protect them, for example. We offer a course, a new course on human trafficking and forced labor. It's taught by a, a Georgetown adjunct faculty member who has a lot of experience working with this in Asia, particularly looking at the relationship between trafficking, forced labor, and some of the supply chains and the role of, of the private sector. We also just offered a new course on humanitarian emergencies and migration that looks at all oh, six or eight different humanitarian emergencies from Yemen to Haiti and comparing the way in which migration and displacement have played a role in those. We offer a course on global governance of migration that looks, for example, at these two new global compacts. Well, the were adopted in late 2018, Global Compact on Refugees and Migration, and various regional processes set up within different geographic regions to manage migration. And then we've offered a new course on research in migration, taught by, a, again, another uh, Georgetown faculty member who previously worked at the World Bank where he has students working really in lots of on-hand examples of how to gauge, for example, the, um, the impact of migra mi migration on remittances or changes in those remittances. So the certificate's intended for government officials, NGOs, civil society, mid-career professionals. Sometimes we have people who are just thinking about a career change and kind of interested in this general issue. Um, it's intended to give you a, a deeper understanding of migration. A lot of our students who come from the U.S. government find that it's helpful to have a more global perspective to understand some of the day-to-day -day tasks they're involved with. Each course, as mentioned, it covers a different dimension of migration. We try through this six courses to give you a pretty comprehensive view of the, kind of the main issues in the migration field. And every course includes some lectures, there's some reading assignments, time for discussion either in the whole class or in small groups, various interactive exercises. So that's the Certificate in International Migration Studies. It's run through the School of um, Continuing Studies where we've worked for, for many years. But I, I want to mention just one other thing that we're, we're just now developing, and that is to develop a program on main campus, which would be a one-week intensive course on global displacement and migration, really for people who are outside of DC who can't come to DC for three-day courses you know, four times a year. Um, so a one-week intensive course, we're planning to offer that in June um, and to offer a residential option, particularly for those who come internationally. We know a lot of um, staff members of international organizations working overseas are interested in taking the course, but need something that's more condensed and intensive. Um, we haven't set the dates for that yet. And Frankly, it depends somewhat on the vaccine and how that's rolled out, but we hope to offer that this summer. And so uh, finally, just to say, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, all of our faculty are affiliated with Georgetown's Institute for the Study of International Migration at the School of Foreign Service. I put my um, email address there, as well as Catherine Donato, who's our director, who, um, also teaches in the program and can answer any questions you might have. Um, why don't I stop there and see what questions you have? I mean, I can obviously talk on and on about migration and refugees, but it'd be good to hear what questions you have about the program or, or anything else. Thank you, Elizabeth. I do have some questions that have popped up. Um, the first question, what are the requirements for someone outside of the U.S.? Um, for well, well, right now, you know, somebody who um, is outside the United States can participate in the online courses, the flex, flex learning courses, just like just like anyone else. They go through the normal registration procedure. And, and Johnny, maybe you could talk a little bit about that, how people sign up for the courses in the first place. 
Yes, um, it's, it's a very simple and easy way to register for the classes. The program is open enrollment. There's no application required. Um, you simply go on our website and um, register for courses. Um, you will find um, a list of all of our certificate programs. The International Migration Studies is under our education um, education information and there's another component to it um, category but um, you will find the curriculum tuition and everything on our website it's simple registration and for um, students outside of the US um, non-credit certificate programs we do not um, assist with any um, visas or anything of that nature but because of COVID right now you would not have to worry about that as Elizabeth um, mentioned, you can just uh, simply register and attend classes. There are live sessions um, and you would be, you know, a part of the class and you wouldn't have to worry about going through any of those, you know, visas or F1 visas or any of that situation to uh, register for the courses. Our next question. Have dates been set for the online global trends and refugees displaced courses? No, uh, no, no, it hasn't been set. I mean, we're, we're thinking about May, May, June. We're, again, we're kind of waiting to see if we can have it in person or if we'll go to the flex learning, but in any event, that'll be offered either in May or in June. However, we do have a few courses that we do have open. Um, we have our labor migration and permanent settl settlers, temporary workers, and unauthorized immigrants. That course um, actually starts January 20th, and it right. ends January 22nd. Um, that's a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and that is Flex Learning, which is online live sessions. We also have our newcomers to citizens, um, immigrant integration. That class is February 10th to February 12th on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as well, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then we have our Environmental Displacement and Migration course, and that is March 24th um, through March 26th. Um, that um, also is 9 to 5, and all of the courses are flex learning, and they are real time. Um, I'm going to actually place the link for you all in the chat uh section so that you all can get this link and go to the schedule um to help you register right yeah i mean i'll put in a plug especially for the labor migration class the next one coming up i mean lindsay is a is a great professor and students have really enjoyed digging into you know so some of the the big trends and people moving for, for for labor you know in reality a lot of these categories get get pretty pretty fuzzy you know between people who are going for better economic opportunities and at the same time escaping violence in their situation so I mean, there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh, synchronous between between these different courses Yes. Um, the next program I have, I'm, I'm sorry, the next question I have, I am based in Brussels, Belgium. Can I, follow, can I follow the courses online and complete the certificate? Yes, you can um, take the courses online, as we mentioned, because of COVID-19. The courses that are usually in person, they're actually online. And we do offer um, a couple courses online. Um, global trends, if I'm not mistaken, that is um, offered online. So you will be able to follow through with um, the courses online and complete the certificate. We do yeah. not have. We oh, offer sorry. two online courses that you can take over over time. The refugees and displaced persons is usually offered over 16 days to go through the exercises and various activities. And the um, global trends has been stretched out even longer for, for people, particularly people overseas who are working full time who may want to just work on weekends, for example. So I think that one is stretched over about three weeks. Um, the flex learning classes are held in the Eastern Standard Time from nine until five, which you know, makes it kind of a late evening for people in, in Europe, but certainly it's possible. It's easier for someone from Europe than someone from Asia to take the courses, I think. Yes, I agree. Um, the next question, what certificates, what certificate do we obtain after passing all of the classes? You will get a certificate of completion 
um, in, in, in the Certificate of Completion in International Migration Studies. It is a eight and a half by 10 um, certificate that is embroidered with Georgetown University symbol. Um, and it will be mailed to you. So once you're once you've completed all the requirements to complete the certificate, you will have to request your certificate. It goes through an academic and a financial audit process, and then your certificate is mailed to you. Um, we have had, due to COVID, we've had um, people request that they get an electronic copy, but that is something you will work out with our academic team who actually is in charge of printing and sending certificates. Yeah, even though this is a non-credit program, frankly, it looks good on your resume to have these, you know, an international certificate and or certificate in international migration studies, just demonstrating your your interest and commitment to the issue above and beyond what other education you've you've already attained. Other next questions: Can course credits earned towards the certificate be applied to master's program, i.e. through the School of Law. Um, our courses are non-credit, so students do not get credit hours. They get continuing education units. And um, our courses do not transfer over to degree programs um, at Georgetown University. Though we've had, um, we've had, you know, another university, if that's something that they actually accept, we do not have any, um, you know, any control over their admissions process, but our courses are non-credit. They do not, you do not get credit hours, you get continuing education units, and they do not transfer to any degree programs here at Georgetown. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I will say that our programs are a great tool to use as you decide to enter a graduate program. Um, they're good, you know, kind of a good refresher and a good stepping stone to use to go to a master's or a graduate program. Yeah, they I mean in comparison with a grad, say with a master's, a master's is definitely has more academic clout, but it also takes a lot more time and a lot more money to to get a master's degree than to get one of these certificates. Um, you know, so I, it's really a, a stepping stone to. Um, kind of demonstrate your interest and competence in an area without the, the rigor and the expense of an academic degree. Um, yeah, so the next question was, can I get information about the cost and the payment? Um, yeah, so the program actually, the overview, the actually program actually cost seven thousand four hundred and seventy dollars um we do have payment options that we have available to students because we're non-credit we do not qualify for any federal aid or any federal funding or need-based scholarships however we do accept employee um, education training budgets so if your employer whether it's private or government um, wants to pay for your tuition we do have a way for that to happen um, we have an intent to pay form for private agencies. For federal government agencies, we have a form called the Standard Form 182, um, nicknamed SF-182, where um, you will actually fill that out, have your approvers sign, and you can send that over directly to us, and we will work with your agency. And the intent to pay form works the same way. Your employer would actually fill that out, let us know how much they are paying of your tuition, and our student accounts department will actually work to invoice your employer directly. Um, we do accept Georgetown University employee tax benefits. Um, that is something that you know Georgetown employees are aware of. However, things have changed since of COVID-19, so students will be responsible for 10% of um, their tuition and Georgetown will cover the remainder. So that is for Georgetown University employees. Um, we have an interest-free payment plan where if your, if your tuition is $4,000 or more, you qualify for this payment plan and that's four equal payments of 25%. Being that the program is $7,000, it does qualify for the um, payment, the interest-free payment plan. And again, that's four equal payments of 25%. What you would do is at registration, you would select all your courses. And when it's time to check out at the payment option, you would select payment plan. And just to go back for the two in regards to the employer 
um, payments at checkout, you would select third party. So the payment plan option will actually trigger our student accounts department to set up a payment plan. Um, and they will actually send you your confirmation to let you know you're enrolled and how to pay your initial 25%. The remainder three will be 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days out. And you'll get an invoice to let you know um, exactly when payment is due for each for each um, month. We accept the GI Bill for military benefits. You will work with our military, um, our G, our veteran certifying official. Her name is Monique Singleton. You will work with her directly in regards to your GI Bill, and she would give you instructions on, you know, what you need to do for that. Um, we ha students have taken out private education loans. Um, we have information that. We have information that we give students. We have a list of lenders that we've worked with. Um, we can provide all this information for you. I will make sure that you guys will have this information um, once I send out a recording of the webinar as well as the presentation. So I will make sure that I send some information about tuition and um, payment options as well. I didn't know all of this. It's good for me to learn. <laughs> and, <laughs> and another way students actually make the our certificate programs affordable to them is that they have the option to register for courses over time. So you do not have to register for all of the courses at once. You can register for them over time. And with the International Migration Studies Certificate, we actually give students a little bit more flexibility because all of the courses are not offered every semester like our other courses. So students have a max of three years to complete this certificate, whereas the other certificates, they have a max of two years. And that's because we offer all of the courses every semester. Um, but for International Migration Studies, you have an option, well, you have a max time of three years to complete. This does not mean that it takes three years to complete the certificate. This is the max time that you have, you know, and with times right now and, you know, jobs and things like that, I think this is a great um, option to have where you can space things out and make it more affordable for you. And last but certainly not least, we do offer tuition discounts. And we have about four discounts that we offer. So we offer a 10% discount. Each one of the discounts are 10%. You cannot combine them. However, um, it is an option that we have. So we have a 10% discount for employee, employees of Boeing. So if you're in a Boeing employee and you want to take the International Migration Studies Program, you will email us with your Boeing email address and we will confirm and we will um, set up your account so that you are able to select this discount at registration. Um, we have a 10% discount for EdAssist. EdAssist is a company that um, works with different organizations in regards to tuition benefits. So your company has a relationship with EdAssist. You'll get a credit letter that you will send over to our student accounts department, and we will award the 10% discount. So we will set that up on your account, and you would select it at registration. We offer a Georgetown alumni discount, and this is for anyone who's completed undergraduate, graduate, doctorate, or a certificate program at Georgetown University. We consider you alumni, and you'll get a 10% discount. We will, um, we have ways to verify your alumni status, and you will get a 10% discount. Our last one is we have a federal academic alliance with OPM, um, which is part of the federal government. We have a 10% discount that we offer to all federal government employees. So in order to qualify for this, you will send your most recent leave and earnings statement um, redacted. And all we need is just your name, um, the date, and your agency's information. So you can take all your personal information off, but that is the last um, so discount that we offer, but that these are the ones that we offer and we find that students are really appreciative of it. So those are our um, our funding options that we have. And um, our next question. How long does the program take to complete? Um, the program, the program takes about, I want to be more exact. It's about um, hmm. people have I done it. Exactly. 
People have done it in as short as six months. It really depends on when the courses are scheduled. Actually, it's easier now with the flex learning for, for a lot of students rather than having to, to come to Washington. Um, usually it takes about a year. You know, take three courses in the spring and three in the fall, or maybe we usually offer one or two in the summer as well. Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth, because I drew a blank, but it is about six months um, to complete. And um, our academic team has actually afforded students the um, option to take any courses that they want within the program, as long as you equal out the, um, the continuing education units that are required. So um, sometimes some of the core courses are not offered and students need to complete their certificates for job related purposes and things of that nature. Um, our academic team does work with students to um, complete this certificate um, at their, you know, it's uh, as soon as possible, basically. Yeah, and you can take the classes in any order. It's best, I mean, the idea was you take global trends first and get a smattering of, of, of everything, but that could, that could actually be your last course. It doesn't matter. Other questions? Well, I'm also happy to talk with any of you individually who would like more information about any of these courses, at least on the academic side. I don't know much about payment plans, but um, <laughs> feel free to email me or we can set up a Zoom call or chat by phone. Yes, we have some more questions that are popping up. So are there career development services for um, participants seeking to make a career change into this field? Our, um, oh, okay. I'll let you go first. I'll let you go first. I was going to say we don't do anything formally as part of the program, but we, you know, we're available. The faculty are all available to support students as they think about career options. And at least in several cases, you know, we've given people leads or you know who to talk to, or there's an opening here. And some of those, you know, may may pan out to to be you know, real full time good jobs. But but it, you know, it's really done more on an informal basis as we get to know each other. Yes, and we have actually have a new career advising. Um, director, her name is Lindsay Thomas here, and she works with students in the certificate program. So students in certificate programs have access to monthly loose letters, career development workshops, alumni panels, and some Canvas courses, which list general resources for um, people who are doing job search. So Lindsay Thomas is a great, um, it's a great person to talk with in regards to career services. And this is something that is a new thing that we've offered starting, um, it was starting uh, fall of 2020, and it has been a great um, asset to our department. We also have things that we offer called Knowledge at Noon, which kind of gives a little bit more um, in depth about career and things of the, things that's happening currently in the world and how careers are changing and how you know working from home has changed a lot of career searches so those are opportunities that we have as well for in regards to career advising um lindsey thomas is excellent and i can also incorporate that information when i send over um the recording today well that's great to know about it. i'll also talk with lindsey and peter some information on migration and humanitarian uh, job possibilities Um, the next question, is there a way I can speak with someone one-on-one -on -one to determine whether this program fits my situation? Sure, I'm happy to talk with you or my colleague, Catherine. You can just email us and we can set up a time to chat. Wonderful. Um, I will make sure that we have everyone's contact information um, listed so that you guys can connect. Okay, some of these I've already answered. Um, what's the cost? I've answered that. Um, the spring, I, I, I mentioned what three courses we have offering for the spring. They're open. Um, we do not have dates for summer and fall as of yet. That's in the workings. So um, what I would say is that you can continue to look at the website for schedule updates. 
We're also open to suggestions if you can think of you know particular topics you're interested in think we ought to offer a course and we we came up with a class in trafficking for example and the other one on humanitarian emergencies because students were suggesting that would be interesting to learn about also environmental migration I think came originally from the students. Um, next question, are there ex exemptions for this course? I would have completed studies in migration with IOM and the oh. ILO and the ICPS in the UK. Um, we do have an option. We do have a option where students can actually um, request to transfer in a course so they don't have to take um, this person actually left, but we do have um, that option. It's a transfer request form that you have to complete and you'll have to submit information about the course that you're trying to transfer in. Um, you will work with our academic department with that. And um, so we do have that option where you can count it towards a course and you, you know, will shorten your time or shorten the amount of courses that you have to take. So that is an option that we, um, we do have. Good. And I'm happy to talk with you as well. I've done an awful lot of work with IOM and I, well, especially IOM, but also ILO. Um, next question for the labor migration course that starts next week. Is there any pre-work required or, materi or materials we need before the course starts? Yeah, all, all of our materials are online. So you'll, you'll get a syllabus for the, for the course and there'll be readings for each section. Uh, session. We try to keep really limit the readings. We have a you know, long list of recommended readings, but usually only an article or two per per class. We usually send those syllabi out about a week beforehand so students can get a head start. Some students like to do all the readings before the class even starts. Um, but you don't have to, there's no purchase of books or anything that's required. Everything is is provided either online or through a URL. Uh, next question. I have a master's degree and 20 years of work experience. Would the level uh would the level be appropriate for mid-career professionals? Um, this person works work and development and is an SFS graduate of 95. Oh, wonderful. We really like having former students. It really depends on what your experience has been. If you've done a lot of work on migration or working with refugees, this may not be the best course for you. If if your background is more general development, this could really, really add something by digging deeper into one aspect of migration or of development that is, is often ignored. So, I mean, we have a lot of students who come in, it's really, this whole program is designed for mid-career professionals, people who have some experience either working in a related field or, you know, just eager to learn more about the issue. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it would depend on how much work you've actually done on migration. If you haven't worked specifically on it, I think this would be a great complement to a to a master's in development studies. Um, the next question, yes, well, the next question, is it possible to pay for each individual course as we go? And that answer is yes. As I mentioned um, before, you have to, you can register for courses over um, a period of time. So you do not have to register for all of them at once. You can pay, you can um, register and pay one by one. Um, if you have, if you are having any net ID issues, as I have in this um, question, you can actually email our enrollment management team. I will have that contact information in the email as well, and we will set you up with our university information systems um, account manager, and they will be able to help you. So that's not a problem. Do not worry. We have assistance that will be able to help you. Okay, so if you live in the States and want to attend the course available in person, would we live on campus? No, um, no we do not offer campus housing. Our courses um, were non-credit. They're not, um, you know, as long as a traditional semester long course. And um, we do not have that 
you know, those fees incorporated into our tuition. Our tuition is only um, for courses only. So no, we do not offer campus housing. However, we do have information that we give students um, in regards to housing that you can, you know, do it yourself. But it's really, housing is really solely on um, the students, not, we don't provide that. How large are the classes? Elizabeth, how would how large would you say the classes are? I think the, the smallest we, we have is generally six or seven. I think the largest have been, I think we had 35 or 40 one time. Most of the classes are, I don't know, in the 15 to 20 person range. Um, yes, I agree. <laughs> Homework requirements. How much work is expected outside of the in-person courses? Um, we really we understand that most people who are taking these courses are working full time. So as I said, we send you a syllabus in advance that has readings, and there's usually oh maybe 20 pages of readings per class period, and say there are four a day, so maybe 80. That seems like a lot. Maybe there'll be a couple hundred pages for the whole course, which you can read all beforehand. You can read at night. You can read over the lunch break. Um, but we don't expect you to do, have to do a lot of work beforehand or afterwards, you know, except for that a few basic reading articles. You, and, and frankly, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't say this, but frankly, some students don't have time to do the readings, but they still learn a lot from participating in the classes. And you can, you can certainly follow along without having done all the reading. Yeah, forget I said that because professors should never say don't do the reading. <laughs> But class participation is key in all of our classes. Um, you must be in attendance and you must participate in class um, because we do not give um, letter grades. We give um, our classes are pass fail, but class participation is um, majority of how you receive your successful completion. So you must be in attendance and you must participate in class. Yeah, and, and most of our students do. Most of them are interested. They ask lots of questions. You know, lots of different levels of understanding. You know, some people say who worked with the government or with IOM know a lot about one particular aspect of migration, but not very much about other issues. So when we, we generally get a lot of questions that you know, these are really topical issues as well. You know, they're they're not things that are you know happening in an ivory tower. There are things that are affecting people's daily lives and politics in, in, in almost every country of the world. Right now, of course, we're really concerned about the impact of COVID on migration, what it's done to migration in Asia, for example, is really disastrous in terms of hundreds of thousands of migrants being sent home, uh, remittances declining, uh, governments really scrambling to deal with returned migrants. Nobody really knows will these long established systems uh, be established immediately. International Organization for Migration has made the point that we're not going to have global recovery from COVID without reestablishment of international migration routes. So, I mean, that's one of the issues that I'm sure will come up in all of our courses this spring, just because it's so, so timely and it's having such a huge impact. Yes. Um, so the next question is, does the class see each other? Can we interact such as on Zoom? So the actual flex learning classes are done via Zoom. So you will be able to um, see each other. Um, I know that me, when I, I'm actually um, in our project management certificate, all of us are actually on um, video. Um, it's kind of a requirement to be on video for some classes. And they set up breakout sessions for us to actually um, mingle together in a group and do some exercises together. So you do have some time to interact. Um, Elizabeth, would you care to kind of um, elaborate on that? Yeah, I think it's been different with the flex learning than when people are actually physically meeting. But, you know, I go into a class and I'll see three or four students who I had last class and who know each other and will say, hey, you know, Alex, how's it going? Or I also work at uh, Institution X or, you know, so there are opportunities to interact with other students. And, and as um, Shani said, we use it even with the flex learning, we use a lot of the breakout rooms just because it's easier to talk with three or four people sometimes than with 15. Yes, and um, the next question. Oh, I think I answered this already, but our grades are pass-fail. 
Um, so you have to complete all six courses to get an SC, which is a successful completion, which means you met all the requirements in the course. Um, the total amount of continuing education units is 15.20, which is um, equivalent to 152 contact hours. So um, you will have to get 152 contact hours and you have to receive an SC, which is successful completion in all six courses to receive their certificate. Um, next question, do you separate migration from fleeing from terror, dictators, et cetera? Yeah, this is a, a real bone of contention in the field is whether refugees, those who are fleeing, fleeing because of violence, conflict, individualized persecution, are a subset of migrants or are they something completely different? Well, we, we cover it both ways. I mean, we cover it in a separate course on refugees and displaced persons. But, you know, in a, for example, a class I teach on environmental migration, you know, a lot of times people are forced to leave. They're forced to flee wildfires or hurricanes, for example. It isn't a question of, of deciding I want a better opportunity opportunity someplace else. So we look at both, those who who travel in search of economic opportunity, different jobs, better jobs to be with families. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, a sense of adventure. Um, people, people move for lots of reasons, both internationally and domestically. We put more emphasis on the international migration than on, say, people moving within the United States from Houston to New York. Uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of migration. We cover that somewhat in, in our labor migration course, but, but generally we look more at international migration. Um, and we cover both people who are forced to flee and those who voluntarily want to move to another country. Thank you. Um, the next question, in the event that I cannot take the course, is there a good general knowledge book that you might recommend to learn about some of the topics covered in the course? Yeah, there, there are a lot of books that have been written on migration. I mean, I don't know, and probably the best thing would be for you to email me and I'm happy to make some suggestions to you know, books that have been useful. It depends on whether you want more of a personal narrative of individuals' experience with migration. There's some really good books or you want more of an overview of a kind of analysis of the different structures, institutions, norms, or if you're more interested in some of these current burning issues. I mean, I'm happy to provide um you know, some suggested reading if you can't take the courses. That's wonderful. Um, the last question I have is, will all required courses and electives be offered online? So at this time, all of our courses are offered online due to COVID-19, and that's up until spring 2021. We do not have an update as regards to summer 2021 or fall 2021. That is a decision that the university will have to make for us. So we do not have an update on that. As of right now, we are operating as though our courses will be offered back online because we cannot make a decision that um, courses um, back in person because we cannot make the decision that the courses will be offered um, via flex learning. Now, the courses that are done online will continue to be online. So that is the traditional online that we offer, and it's an asynchronous format. It's not real time like the flex learning. So the asynchronous format is students go at their own pace. So that's different than the flex learning, which is the real time via Zoom. So we will continue to offer those courses like Global Trends online. That's not via flex learning. Yeah, we were in the process before this whole COVID thing of really converting our classes to an online format because there are people in different parts of the world where it's much easier to access online than to come to Washington. Although, I know there's something special about being in a classroom, I think, with real life people. But anyway, we'll have to see if we can convert more of them to online even after we hopefully not too distant future, we move away from um, all these COVID restrictions. I think offering this program online will be a great asset. Next question. I had a general intro to migration from 3,000 years ago forward. Is this history available also, um, Dartmouth College grad student? So you took a class 3,000 years ago on migration and want to know if it's going to duplicate what we cover? No, they had a class that. Um, it's a general intro to migration from 3,000 years ago forward. So they took a class that um, discussed migration um, from 3,000 years ago to current. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, it sounds really interesting. We usually don't go back that far. We usually go back to after the post-World War II period. I mean, there's some mention of, you know, kind of historic human migration settling the whole planet, but um, yeah, we really focus on the, on the current, um, current system. Um, that was the last question. Um, we still have a little more time if you guys want to ask some more questions. And if you can't think of a question, but think you might have a question tomorrow, feel free to just email me. And I mean, you can either, Shani can forward it to me if you don't have my email address in front of you, or I'll, I'll send it on to the relevant person if you have a question about a particular course as well. Um, at this time, we have a question. Can we attend any courses in person? At this time, no. Um, you cannot attend any of our courses in person. Um, our, our actual school is actually closed, and mm -hmm. there is no one there. All of us are working remotely, so no, you would not be able to attend any of our courses in person right now. And Elizabeth's email will be sent to you all um, once we conclude the webinar. Um, the information, you will have a copy of her presentation, as well as her contact information, as well as my contact information, Catherine Donato's information, um, Lindsay Thomas information. So I will make sure that you have all the information that you need so that you can contact everyone for any assistance with the International Migration Studies Certificate. Yep, sounds great. Well, it's been, I'm sorry I can't see your faces, but I look forward to meeting at least some of you in the future, and I'm happy to talk with you individually. I mean, this is a great program, and these are, you know, obviously I feel passionately about this, but these are some of the most burning issues the world is facing right now, is how to deal with millions of people on the move. Well, thank you. Everyone is saying thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, we're going to conclude the webinar now. And as I stated, I will be sending you information as long as well as the presentation and the recording um, to everyone that registered for the webinar, those who attended and those who did not. So we'll make sure we don't miss anyone. And I look forward to seeing some of you um, register for courses. Great. Have a great afternoon and enjoy the rest of your week. And Kat, I'm sorry, and Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoyed it. We'll be seeing you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Stay safe. Bye-bye.